up until this point, everything's okay, you know? We go to the baggage thing. Our bags ain't coming, yeah? Everybody else has got the bags, right? And then the police just come round with guns and say to me, right, you, boom. Hands up in the air, this and that. Oh, no, the right, now we're f Childhood was uh, all a bit rough. I had a stutter. Um, I couldn't speak English till I was four, and I couldn't even really talk properly. Loads of getting called p black bastard, getting spat on, people trying to burn their houses down. I was on my own, lone wolf, no friends, nobody there. It was just me, just taking s. And that's when I become a doorman. It was from the doorman, I started to train myself, started to box, take steroids. So I was buying them, taking them, and um, the other doorman, they wanted them as well. So I went, OK, I'll get you some as well. So originally, I was just going to countries like Turkey, Spain, uh, Greece, just bringing back a few, a few hundred pound worth, and I like four times my money on it. And then it got to a stage where I worked with a couple of cousins of mine, and we thought, right, listen, let's take it to the massive stage here, yeah? Let's uh, bring this in ourselves instead of these small little things we're doing, yeah? Let's just go and do it properly. Uh, to, so we sourced a place, and the cheapest place to buy steroids is Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, because at the time, Al-Qaeda were active, the Taliban were f***ing, kidnapping everybody, and we were Sikh boys, Indian Sikhs, and so we were told, you don't want to be going there. Me, I, I didn't give a f about that, yeah? I just thought, no, I'm f***ing doing this. When we landed there, yeah, when these chemists, yeah, but they said, no, we can't supply any more than this. Uh, we only have five ampules available. I said, no, we need 150,000. Yeah, they went, no, well, we can't, you know, that's impossible anyway. Went about three, four, and then this one guy said, listen, there's this one company in Karachi town, and they organized the full pill market. And this is how the meeting went down with him. Uh, he wanted all the money up front. He said, yes, I can, sub I, I can get you that amount. And he went, yeah? I went, how long? He went, next day it'll be all f***ing if you packed. My two cousins said, no, don't hand the money over, yeah? Because that's going to last. We're going to see this. We ain't going to see that money again. I went, listen, there's no other way of doing it. I went, we have to show a bit of trust here. And I think the guy likes me, you know? I gave him the money, and he tapped on the ceiling. This hole just appeared. You give them money, and this kid come up, got it, and scampered across. That was that. And then my cousin was just looking at me thinking, <laughs> right, Chet, are you in control of this? I went, yes, I am in control of this. Are you? Then he told me, come back here tomorrow, 2 p.m., and everything be sorted. And he was a man of his word. It was all there, done, dusted. I used to go through Karachi Airport and bypass all security. The first time round, it went like this. Bags, some, some bags on the x-ray, suitcases, open them up, full of steroids, bam, all of it. And they said, what the f*** is this? And they were looking, they went, no, no, you can't take all this through. We were going, oh, listen, we're trainers, you know, we're bodybuilders, fighters. They were going, no, no. And then they noticed a porn mag. And then one of them picked it up, and I went, uh, do you want it? He goes, yeah. I went, right, yeah, listen. I said, I've got two more here, yeah? One for each case here. And, when we walk. You go, right, okay. <laughs> because in Pakistan, you can't get no porn. There's no such thing as a porn magazine back then, yeah. And here, there's another two geezers. And then it's the same problem there, but I thought, listen, the porn mags work that time round, yeah? Let's try these. So we paid these other two guys off. And we were like, wow. We've walked through airport security by paying off with five porn mags. Brilliant. We changed at Amsterdam, okay? Uh, but on the Karachi flight, we just got pissed, right? The three of us, we just got pissed. Forgot about the problem in hand, really. And uh, when we landed in Amsterdam, I think there was a five hour wait for the next flight that from Amsterdam to Newcastle. And this was a sober period. This is where it was all sinking in a little bit on the three of us. We were sobering up now and it was uh, at two o'clock in the morning. And we were like, right, okay. Didn't even speak to each other, yeah? We, were, <laughs> we didn't even speak to each other, yeah? Because we know what we've done, 
We've come this far. What else is it to say? Right, I'm going, listen, trust me, it'll be all right. I said, I know these Amsterdam flights. When we went through customs, got the bags, and then a big sigh, high fives, it was six weeks, and then we hit it up again. So you've done one trip now. Yeah. And then where did it go from there? Uh, anyway, we did another trip, and then the money was coming in, the money was coming in, but uh, they just wanted to stick with the steroids. But I wanted to do Valium what's higher risk. Uh, but they weren't too keen on that one. They went this, this, and then we had a bit of a falling out and then blah, blah, blah. You do your thing, I'll do mine, all right, okay. And now the volume is where the dollar was. I was paying at a time for a thousand tablets, nine pound. Street value is a pound a tablet. In Scotland, two pound a tablet. So the money I was making was silly and that's when I started to take mules over. Uh, I'd pay for the trip, pay for the holiday, pay for all the expenses. If they wanted to f I'd pay for that as well, and then I'd give my grand in the hand afterwards. Really, I would just pick people who I know who aren't going to open the mouth to the police if anything, if anything happens. Uh, they will take it on the chin. Uh, that is the whole point of a mule, really. Two mules, I flew from Newcastle to Barcelona. Barcelona to Karachi, and then from Karachi to Alicante. Up until this point, everything's okay, you know? We go to the baggage thing, our bags ain't coming, yeah? Everybody else has got the bags, right? And then the police just come around with guns and say to me, right, you, boom, hands up in the air, this and that, oh, no, the right, now we're f And then they pulled our cases out, handcuffed us. I had a emerald ring. I had a watch, I had cigarettes in my case. The police just took all that, took it, took my ring, took my watch, took everything. I said, do I get a receipt for that? And he just put his hand on his gun and he went, you want a problem? And I went, and take what you want then. I'm take what you want. So I got taxed by the police there. They were laughing the off. They went, wow, look at all this. Because they said, this is the biggest seizure in Spanish history. They even knew them, them themselves and they were all taking photos of it themselves and it was in the newspapers the next day there's the biggest seizure of classy pharmaceutical drugs in Spanish history and it still is people are telling me you're kind of 10 years here you know I went, what for Valium I went no no no, no can't be went, no 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 not in Spain there was somebody got nine here for having four tablets because he intended to sell them so they gave him nine years for the intention to sell four tablets so now I'm thinking I've got a quarter of a million, right? Spanish jails are supposed to be the worst in Europe, and my wing is the worst wing. So I'm thinking, right, I am, I am in the worst place in Europe here, because this is the worst jail, the worst wing, in the worst country, and we're the worst people. The Russians had a click, the Germans had a click, the South Americans had a click, the Moroccans and Algerians, the Muslims, they had a click, but I'm neither of any of these people. But I just f it, I was just on my own. I didn't fit in anywhere here. F and I just had to do the f work on my own there. And I've done it. So when you say do the work, what do you mean? Do the work is knocking people out, baby. <laughs> That's what doing the work is. <laughs> when I was phoning home, and then they were saying to me, Chet, man, have you seen the newspapers? I went, no. I went, what the f I haven't seen the newspapers? Interpol have been watching you blah 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 it's not alone good baby it was only after a matter of time of being there about over a year i got talking spanish and then i spoke with the top heads there uh, the bank robbers the kids that were doing done for 160 kilo of hash from morocco to spain and but these boys said listen you need you need a bent lawyer he went because he's the only one who can give the judges a bribe i went right okay then Hook me up, hook me up with that. Hook me up, went through the process, he was brilliant. I paid him eight grand in total, eight grand, and he got me four and a half years, and that's for all three of us. And so by then, we were already done, we only need to do three years of that, and we'd already done about two and a, two and a bit, so it was all happy days. Right, the first day of freedom, I was that high, I was just wearing my shorts and a vest, 
and this was like October. No, this was November, I think. And um, I was training in the gym, and I was that excited. Everybody was like hugging me, saying, oh, you're going home, you're going home, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gave away all my f***ers. I gave away everything. Didn't realize I was that happy. I got on a plane, coughed, just in my shorts and vest, took me to Gatwick, the three of us, and then um, they just like, took the cuffs off, Gatwick, they phoned the Gatwick police, has he got any warrants here? And they said no, and they just took them off, and they left me there, boom, they were right, now go. No money, no nothing. It was the middle of the night and just my shorts and my vest. So what made you go straight? Getting sentenced to 11 years in total is too much for anybody. It changes you, it f you up, and it's a hurt that you put your family through. Well, not only that, it's like, it's like everything. You learn. If you don't learn, you're a fool. Uh, huh. As Yuri was bringing the spacecraft in for the, the first manual approach, we were just aware that things were not going right. We had another failure, um, which meant the computer screen went down. So Tim and I were effectively blind. And that was the point I realized this approach is, is, is just not good. And Yuri, um, actually his hand started trembling on the controllers. 